Did you know that even though the Titanic sank on its way to New York City, there are still many New York City Titanic related sites. Hi, I'm Megan Murad, a licensed New York City tour guide, and today we're going to explore some of New York City's Titanic related sites. Now, when the Titanic sank in 1912, the entire world was shaken, but perhaps more so than anywhere else was New York City. And part of the reason for this was so many prominent New York City citizens were on board the Titanic. For example, Isidore Strauss and John Jacob Astor IV. If you can imagine a ship today with all of the biggest celebrities that live in New York City sinking, that's the equivalent of the Titanic sinking in 1912. So the entire city was in mourning. And in many ways, we still mourn the loss of the lives lost on the Titanic. So today we're going to be visiting Titanic related sites and remembering those events. But first, make sure that you click subscribe. And today we're going to remember the sites of the ship that never arrived in New York City. Thousands of people every single day walk past the lighthouse-like structure behind me, and many never take any notice, and they definitely don't realize that this lighthouse was once part of a nationwide effort to honor the more than 1,500 souls that were lost on the Titanic. When the Titanic sank in 1912, the whole world was shaken. But perhaps nowhere as much as New York City, who had many of their prominent residents, such as Isidore Strauss and John Jacob Astor IV, on board. So New Yorkers were distraught and they wanted to create a memorial. This memorial was paid for by everybody from the likes of the Vanderbilt family to children who were donating pennies to make this memorial happen. What the idea for the memorial was, was that this would be a lighthouse and the light on top of the lighthouse would actually glow green and you could see it more than seven miles out at sea. Now if you're looking at it right now and you're thinking, you know, there's a lot of buildings around it, it's not on the water, that's because this was not the original location for this memorial. The original location was a little further downtown and right on the East River and it was actually on top of the Siemens Church Institute. So it was about 13 stories up in the sky at a time when there weren't as many skyscrapers as we have now. This was dedicated in April 1913, a year after the sinking of the Titanic. Now, as times changed, eventually the Siemens Church Institute was torn down in the 1950s and they were going to demolish the Titanic Memorial with that. But concerned New York City residents said that this memorial should not be demolished along with the building. So they fought to preserve it. They did preserve it and they brought this memorial to a new location right here at the corner of Water and Fulton Street. Water and Fulton Street. Now, if you were to walk all the way down here, you would get to a very exciting area of the South Street Seaport. Lots of great restaurants and bars, and there's music concerts and a great view of the Brooklyn Bridge. As you're going to get your nice adult beverage, make sure that you stop here to pay your respects to those that lost their lives on the Titanic. When New Yorkers come to Chelsea Piers, they usually think of things like golf. There is a golf driving range here. That's that black scaffolding with the green netting hanging down from it. This is a sports mega complex. I used to figure skate and drive a Zamboni here at Chelsea Piers. But before this was a sports mega complex, this is actually where the White Star Line vessels docked. White Star Line was the company that owned the Titanic. This is where the Titanic was supposed to have docked. 
the passengers who survived the Titanic did not dock here. They ended up docking a little further south at Pier 54, and we're going to visit that in just a minute. But I do want to show you something that actually my fiance's daughter pointed out to me. So here we have Chelsea Piers. Chelsea Piers is where the Titanic was supposed to have docked. And then if you look just across the street, there is a white building. Now this white building, it's the IAC building. It was designed to make you think of the sails of a sailing ship, but what it actually looks like is an iceberg. So how horrible is it that right where the Titanic was supposed to have docked, we have a building that makes many people think of an iceberg. Do you think it looks like an iceberg? Let me know in the comments below. Whenever I bring guests to a location such as the High Line or Chelsea Market, I show them this rusty arch. And they're always kind of surprised to see that there's a rusty arch here. This used to be the entrance to Pier 54. Now Pier 54 no longer exists. Instead, what we have is this really cute island called Little Island. Sometimes it's referred to as Floating Island. I have a whole video about that that you can check out. But what we are talking about today is why that rusty arch was preserved. So what was so special about Pier 54? Pier 54 was owned by Cunard Line. Cunard Line was a fierce competitor of White Star Line. White Star Line owned the Titanic and Cunard owned the Carpathia. The Carpathia is the ship that rescued the survivors from the Titanic. When the Carpathia docked in New York City with those survivors, it docked right here. So we're preserving that bit of history here with this rusty arch that's right before the entrance to Little Island. I think that it will be hard to see it in a video, but if you're here in real life and the lighting's really good, you can actually see on, you have the arch and then there's a, a line underneath the arch. It actually says White Star Line and Cunard Line in very, very faded letters. In 1934, these two competitors actually merged into one company. That's why you will see both of their names very, very faded out on the arch. Rusty Arch, Titanic location in New York City. Millions of people pass through Macy's every single year and very few of them realize that this is a Titanic related site. Now Macy's is named for a man named Rowland Hussey Macy, but eventually Macy's became owned by Isidore Strauss. Isidore Strauss actually started with a crockery department in the basement of Macy's. And then he eventually rose up the ranks and came to own Macy's. In 1902, he moved Macy's to this Herald Square location. Isidore Strauss was on the Titanic with his wife, Ida. Now, if you've seen the movie Titanic, you know, the one with Leonardo DiCaprio, I'm just gonna pull over here so we can talk a little bit easier. So if you've seen the movie Titanic with Leonardo DiCaprio, you may recall that there is a scene where there is an older couple and they go down with the ship together. That's Isidore and his wife, Ida. The story is that Isidore and his wife were offered spots on the lifeboats. But Isidore said, no, I will not go before the younger man. And Ida said, I have lived with Isidore, loved Isidore, put up with Isidore for years. I'm not going to leave him now. And they both ended up going down with the ship together. So when you visit Macy's, you are visiting the building owned by Isidore Strauss. And this is a Titanic related location in New York City. The story of the Titanic has been adapted to stage and screen numerous times. In fact, the very first Broadway show that I ever saw was a musical adaptation of Titanic. That show was at the Lund Fontaine Theater. 
So it makes sense that there were passengers on the Titanic that were associated with the New York City theater scene. This theater that I am standing in front of right now is the Hudson Theater. The Hudson Theater was owned by Henry Harris. Henry Harris was on the Theater Managers Association of Greater New York as well, and he was aboard the Titanic with his wife, Irene. Henry Harris ended up dying on the Titanic, but his wife Irene survived and she remained heartbroken for her entire life. But she returned to New York City and became the very first female theater producer and launched the careers of many, many actors and actresses who performed on stage and screen. Now this theater, there's an amazing tour that you can take of this theater. My colleague Tim Dolan runs a wonderful tour company called Broadway Up Close. If you are interested in Broadway history and theater history in New York City, you want to check out his company, Broadway Up Close. And he runs a tour of the Hudson Theater. Now, on this tour of the Hudson Theater, you can actually go inside with Tim and learn about the history. And he will delve even more deeply into the story of the Harrises. So check out Broadway Up Close. There are Titanic memorials all throughout New York City. And I'll actually include a map in the comments below in case you want to check out more of those locations. As I walk around New York City and think about how affected the city was in 1912, I can't help but wonder, what would the city have been like if the Titanic had never sank? Let me know what you think in the comments below. I'm very curious and it's something that I like to ponder myself. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that you learned something and discovered something new about New York City. As always, make sure that you click subscribe so you never miss a New York Minute.